Greetings. We would like to welcome each and every one of you. Before we begin this uh, video, this uh, information that we are going to be sharing with you, which will be uh, part two on the uh, dress reform uh, video uh, that many of you have been responding to. Uh, as a matter of fact, by God's grace, it has gone viral as we are speaking. Uh, in one of our channels, the main channel, the Amazing Word Ministry channels, which uh, many of you have uh, joined us live at this moment, uh, it, it's almost at uh, 7,000 views. And we want to give God uh, all the glory and honor for, for that. It shows that uh, really our people are hungry for truth. Our sisters uh, are aware of the uh, environment that they are living in. And they want to do the right thing. They, they want to honor God with their bodies, as the, Holy, uh, the Bible tells us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we were very surprised uh, to um, uh, the, the fact that uh, the video has gone viral. And so in this video, uh, we would like to address uh, some questions uh, that some of you have had uh, that have sent to us. We will also uh, like to uh, share with you uh, the links that we have promised to share with you in regard to where to purchase uh, those materials uh, at a very inexpensive price. And, uh, but before we get into all of that, uh, we would like to apologize to all of you, especially those who uh, tried to join us live uh, yesterday as we tried to um, bring this video to your attention, but unfortunately we had some issues and, and we could not bring the video to your attention, but by God's grace, we are back on live and uh, we would like to welcome each one of you. Uh, there are some who are already online, uh, like glory, glory to him, uh, someone by the name of glory to him. We'd like to welcome you, Fariza, uh, Watzler, uh, Rich uh, Moes, I believe, uh, welcome each and every one of you. And also we invite questions that you may have in this live broadcast. I see uh, Karen um, also online. And if you have questions related to the first video that was published uh, in regard to dress reform, also uh, to in regard to this video, Send us your question, uh, those who are live at this moment, even after this uh, broadcast is over, you can still send your question uh, to us. And by God's grace, we will try, uh, if we have the answer for you, we will try to answer uh, those uh, questions. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Father God, which art in heaven, uh, we pray in a special way that you would be in our midst now. Uh, may you uh, teach us what we need to know. We are living in the end time, and this subject is also uh, part of present truth for this time. We all have sinned, Lord, and fallen short of your glory. And so therefore, this uh, message, this video is to uh, enlighten us on how to uh, get back to that glory and get back to walking with you. And you have given us your word, the wisdom uh, to know the truth. And you said the truth shall set us free. So set us free now, we pray, and bless your people in a special way. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. amen. Now to begin, I would like to take us to the book of Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, this passage here, when it comes to the fashion of the world, dealing with the fashion of the world, dealing with dress reform. This is the main passage for us as Seventh-day Adventists to compare that passage with Revelation chapter 17. The Bible reads in verse 1 of Revelation 12, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. We know in the Bible, a woman represents a church. Now this is referring to 
the pure church of God. And that woman, we are told, is the original church. And in these last days, we are told in Revelation 12, same chapter, verse 17 of the book of Revelation, it says, the dragon was wroth with the woman. It is that same woman that we just read here in verse 1. The dragon was wroth with the woman, which is the church. And in these last days, there will be a remnant that will reflect the same characteristics as the early church, which the Bible says, and went to make war with the remnant of a seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimonies of Jesus Christ. Because the remnant looks similar, exactly like the early church, the dragon hates it, will hate it. And notice also it says they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We are Christ's witnesses in this world. So the way we live our lives should reflect Him. Everything we do should be a testimony of Jesus Christ or to Jesus Christ, to draw men and women to Him, not to ourselves. As it was mentioned last time, this video is to help us as the remnant to get ready. This video is not to um, condemn, or judge. condemn or judge, thank you. It's not to condemn or, or judge. It is to help us as the people of God. As God says through Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, follow the old paths where there is the good way and ye shall find rest for your soul. This is the call for us today. And let's compare this with Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 12, verse 1 and verse 17, we read, describe the early church and the remnant church. But in Revelation chapter 17, we see the counterfeit church in these last days, which is Babylon in these last days, and which also represents the world in these last days. And notice carefully with me what it says here. Verse 3, so he carried me away in the wilderness, in the spirit rather, into, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, there's a woman again, sit upon a college called beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So you have a woman, which represents a church, which is an apostate church here, that rules the world. And then it says, and the woman was arrayed, that is in verse 4, and the woman was arrayed with in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in, the ha in her hand full of abomination and fearfulness of a fornication. You see the contrast here between this church and the church of Revelation chapter 12. The original church and the remnant church versus this apostate church. This church is following all and promoting as well the fashions of this world, decked with gold, jewelries, and all of those things, pearls, makeup, you name it. And she is a harlot, the Bible also says. She is a harlot woman. She committed fornications with the kings of the earth. She is a harlot. That means the way she dresses, she leaves nothing to the imagination, right? Mm. Hence, the great controversy in these last days. It's not just over the Sabbath. It's over which format, which church, whose righteousness are we going to reflect in these last days? Now, I just wanted to share this with you, and uh, let's, let's go into this study here. Um, again, we are still dealing with dress reform, and by God's grace, we will be making other videos about this, to, to help educate our people because we are told that the health reform message is connected with the health reform mm -hmm. and which is the... Third Go ahead, you were gonna say something. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which is a third angel's message. Mm -hmm. uh, it's connected with the third angel's message. And as we looked at last time in part one of this series, the dress reform message, and many of you have responded to it and were blessed, and there was a testimony I wish I had on the screen uh, that uh, I would read for you 
from a sister. As a matter of fact, I will, uh, I will get that in a moment. So let's ask the questions. Questions have come and uh, we're going to answer those questions. Questions and uh, answers. Questions and answers. Let's read this. So one of the questions that we received uh, from a few of you was over makeup. Should, be, should we be wearing, should Christians be wearing makeup? And so I thought that we would um, share uh, a few uh, quotes from Spirit of Prophecy on what um, she shares about makeup. And just to give you um, a short testimony about myself, um, when I was in the world, I was not big on makeup. I praise God for that. And I noticed that um, a lot of times people would ask me, what are you using on your face? Because your, your skin is so clear. And praise God. And I would just tell them, really, nothing special. Just something that I bought at, you know, at uh, a store, a normal cream. And usually people would be asking me these questions. Um, they would uh, have some breakouts in their skin and uh, they wore makeup, obviously. So as I mentioned, gr growing up in my teens, um, my 20s, I didn't wear a lot of makeup. It was something that I just use um, occasionally for a special occasion, I would say. And I just praise God that I was not into it. Uh, perhaps the Lord was already working in my life because little by little, and as I came to, to the church, I began to dislike wearing it. Now, I did wear some um, eyeliner uh, that was still wearing the eyeliner because I didn't really actually put anything on my face. As I said, by the grace of God, I, I, I didn't have any problems with my skin. Um, so I didn't feel the use to put anything on my face. I would just put, you know, wash and put lotion. And so, but one of the things that I used to wear is eyeliner. So one day the Lord just convicted me to not to wear that anymore. And that that's something that came from uh, the heathens, the, you know, the Egyptians. It was something that, you know, they, the worldly, uh, you know, practice. So I think that was the last thing that I, from, you know, using makeup that I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore. I want to please my Lord. And as God continued to teach me, to uh, teach me these things, um, I just, I just surrender. I said, Lord, this is your will. Um, you know, we, we do those things. We put makeup on because we want to enhance our parents. We want to look pretty for the world. We want to impress others. But remember, as God's people, we are here to impress God. And that's, that should be our, our, our goal. And that should be our purpose. So um, if you would like to read uh, the quote from Spirit of Prophecy, what she says on that. Many are ignorantly injuring their health and endangering their life by using cosmetics. They are robbing the cheeks of the glow of health and then to supply the deficiency, use cosmetics. When they become heated in the dens, the poison is absorbed by the pores of the skin and is thrown into the blood. Many lives have been sacrificed by this means alone. And that is from Health Reformer, October 1st, 1871. So going back to, she says, the poisons is absorbed in the skin. So, and this is what happened with makeup. Makeup is just a bunch of chemicals put together uh, to make you look um, better. And so we're gonna we'll read a little bit of um, what what were the the things that the Egyptian used in their makeup to make it you know to make all those colors and everything, and even to them it was poisonous, and today it's still poisonous. So um, the best way yes is to um, just keep your skin clear, wash your face, and put. Uh, you, sh the, you have to be careful what you use on your face also. 
as uh, she mentioned, your skin, you know, the pores is absorbing. And that's why one of the reasons I spoke about the quality, the materials um, that we use in our body, uh, we have to know what's touching our skin. And because especially um, the exercising clothes that are made of chemicals, and when we sweat, that our skin is absorbing that. And without knowing, I believe that if the Lord would reveal to us uh, the cause of our pain and illnesses, and we would be surprised that you know, what it is that has caused uh, such thing. We never think about, oh, the clothes that I wear that is causing this. Well, we have, our skin have pores, and as we sweat, as the, as the material is touching your skin, your, body, your skin is absorbing that. So it's the same thing with makeup. And you, uh, as I mentioned in the other video, as, as you would imagine someone that's modestly, but in your mind, a modest, uh, godly woman, you wouldn't imagine her wearing red lipstick or nails painted, um, uh, eyeshadow or eyeliner. You, you don't just imagine any of those things. You would just think that of somebody simple, uh, meek, gentle, humble, and simple in dress. So, and that's what God uh, is calling us to be separate from the world, to be a peculiar people, um, to look the part. It's not our dress that make us holy, as I mentioned before, because we are holy, then the dress, or because we are peculiar, then the dress will be peculiar. So um, I wanted to share a, a little uh, a bit of history of um, where makeup came from, if you don't mind reading that. Sure. Um, this is from CNN Style. It says, how ancient Egyptian cosmetics influence our beauty? Notice the word rituals. Egyptians didn't only apply makeup to enhance their appearances. Cosmetics also had practical uses, ritual functions, or symbolic meanings. The final touches to this a lady's makeup would, of course, be red lipstick, a classic look even today. To make the paint, ochre uh, was typically blended with animal fat or vegetable oil, though Cleopatra was known to crush beetles for her perfect shade of red. These highly toxic uh, concoctions, often mixed with dyes, extracted from iodine and uh, bromine, manite, could lead to serious illness or sometimes death, possibly where the phrase kiss of death derives. Mm. That is quite powerful. So, sisters, stay away from makeup. You know, clear your skin. Don't put those poisons in your, in your body, in your skin. Uh, you are beautiful. God made you beautiful. Embrace that beauty and uh, be faithful unto the Lord. Uh, be looked apart. Be the, the holy, peculiar uh, daughter that God is calling you to be, to uh, dissociate yourself from the world's customs because it's a worldly custom. It's not for, for God's people. Um, I just wanted to add, as we are s speaking right now, and a few of you uh, were asking about the the uh, links for the uh, uh, for for where they can purchase um, those um, modest clothes. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at, under the description of this video, which is live right now, if you look under the description, I just added some link. You have to go to the description under this video as i mentioned and you will have to scroll all the way down uh, to the very bottom of our description there and then you're going to see uh, some of the links and then as we are speaking i am adding more links to it uh, there are a few more links uh, that gives you more options mm -hmm. uh, a few more links i'm going to be adding to that but again for those who are asking right now and those who have asked before, under this video, right under the video, 
where we have our description. You will say it says to make a donation and so on and so forth. Um, you click that and then you scroll down and then you're going to see some of the links there. And we could not share those links with you then because when the first video was made, it was Sabbath. Okay. And so we didn't think that it was appropriate to, to share those links to buy things on the Sabbath. And that's the reason why we waited uh, to share those links with you after the, the Sabbath. All right, let's move on. Um, on the screen we have. And uh, were you able to um, add the comments after the links? The comments? Yeah, that I wrote. Um, the, um, because some of the dresses that I shared, um, even though the length is good and the sleeves, but there's, there's a little bit deeper uh, v-neck. And I mentioned this in the other video that some of the dresses that I purchase, I do have to wear with something underneath or a tank mm -hmm. top um, to make it modest. So I wrote those comments. I just want to make sure that it's there for them. Yeah, I'm going to add that. Yeah. I'm going to add that to it in a moment. Okay. So another question that came in was on children. How about children? Should uh, children uh, be dressing modestly? Absolutely, right? They are the children of God. <laughs> the Bible says, unless we become like children, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, children should uh, be taught to dress modestly. Um, because it begins there, it begins at home, it begins um, uh, as uh, infants, as, as children, to teach them the right ways of the Lord so that when they grow up, they don't depart from it. If we don't teach them and we just put the clothes on them, as they grow up, they're going to start wondering how come I see others wearing uh, shorter dresses or skirts and how come I cannot wear it. So we do need to teach them. We need to teach them uh, so they understand the principles why uh, mom and dad are dressing them this way. Um, and so uh, a question that came in was a sister was asking how about uh, uh, smoke dresses and embroidery on embroidery uh, uh, dresses. And I believe it's okay. That, uh, it's it's all depends. We want to make sure it's still simple. It's not. Uh, overdone or to draw uh, attention. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, yes, we are called to be the light of the world, but to portray Christ. People are to see Christ in us, the meekness, uh, the gentleness, not uh, to focus on our clothes. That's why God called us to be clear, to dress modest and simple. Um, and so, again, uh, Christ warned us about the pride of life, but not about its beauty and its grace, natural beauty and grace. So yes, we, I don't think God was asking you to look like a sack of potatoes. He just wants you still to look presentable for him. And uh, God is uh, great and almighty and beautiful. And he wants his people to be I believe uh, Sister White says that uh, we are to be the uh, spectacle to the world, right? But not in the way that the world uh, sees that, right? Not with shiny things or with glittery things or, or with uh, short dresses and skirts and shorts and things like that, but preserved, meek, simple, um, with purity and grace. So we want to see that in the children. Children are so innocent and beautiful. And it is God's will that children also dress like that. So as long as the embroidery is not overdone, again, you don't want to spend uh, uh, too much money on, on, the, on the clothes. Um, remember the Bible says not costly. Um, so we want, have to keep that in mind. And as long as the, you know, the work, the smoke embroidery work, it's uh, not too tight as well for the children. It's, you, again, it needs to be appropriate. And I believe if you're out shopping for clothes for your children, pray before, ask the Lord to guide you. I do that when I go to the stores. I said, Lord, I'm here on a mission. Help me to find what I need so that I can get it and keep going. So I, have, uh, I can keep going on serving you. I have t more time to serve you. And to minister unto those um, uh, around me. So and so, we don't want to spend 
too much time, and God is here to help us. It's his will that we represent him um, as a peculiar and holy people, as modest. So pray before you go to the store. He will, he will. I have, uh, you know, interesting uh, testimonies that when I pray before I go to buy um, clothes, and God, I go straight to the rack, and I'm like, oh, I don't have to look any further. This is it. This is what I need. So it's great. There, there was a passage I wanted to share earlier, and but I was uh, updating some of the uh, links. I didn't get to share that, which is found in Jeremiah chapter 4, uh, verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, uh, speaking of makeup, as we read a moment ago. It says, And when thou art spoiled, what will thou do? Though thou clothes thyself with, with uh, grimson, Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, sounds very similar to yeah. the uh, Babylon church. Though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. Um, in vain, the Bible says, you put on those makeup. Uh, and uh, as the scripture says, thy lovers will despise thee. Uh, one of the things that I always say about uh, makeup, I, I mean, this is not judging anybody, uh, but when, when you see someone wearing makeup, as the scripture says here, uh, you see that person, and uh, let's say every time you see that person, you always see that person with makeup. That person always look one way. But if you ever see that same person, Without the makeup, that person looked different. Yeah. It looks like a, another person. It's, it, it, it seems like you're not dealing with the same person anymore. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's almost like uh, those uh, movies, the superheroes movies, uh, wearing a mask and then you cannot identify that person. And then, and then when the mask is off, it's a completely different uh, person. But God wants us to have natural beauty, as Peter says, uh, that we should not be wearing those things. It should be uh, the beauty of the heart that God wants to see. We should not be like Babylon, as we read in Revelation chapter 17 a moment ago. And also, um, just a thought came to mind, um, as we read, um, those things are poisonous. poisonous. Mm -hmm. So we remember your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So we are not to put anything that can cause harm in our body. So think about that also. It has to do also with your health. Amen. And in order to serve God earnestly and faithfully, we need to be in good health. Amen. So the next question that came in was about exercising clothes. Uh, someone asked, what do I wear out at exercising? And so I just add a, a, a picture, two pictures here as a, a contrast. Um, so on the on the right, uh, we have, we have um, on, on, I guess, on my right, uh, there's a woman wearing the uh, spandex, uh, leggings um, style, and she has a top, but you can clearly see the, um, you know, her shape and her, her body parts, her, so, it's, you know, there's nothing modest about that. You, you, you cannot imagine a, a godly Christian woman dressed like that. So even when we are out, we need to represent God. As I said before, we're not uh, dressing modestly only on Sabbath, but every day it's a lifestyle. It's every day representing God because every day we have the opportunity to minister to others, remember, uh, simplicity in dress is um, it's one of the biggest uh, tools in ministry because you can reach, the person that is listening to the words of the Holy Spirit, they're no longer focusing on what you're wearing, and so you, you are serving God and you are representing Christ. So, and then the left, you have the lady that's wearing, um, she has some leggings on, but she's wearing uh, a skirt. So, so you can see that she's, she's modest. You would imagine a Christian lady dressed like that out exercising or out in the park. 
I personally, I just wear leggings and I have a, a long casual skirt on. Um, that's fine with me and that works for me. Um, again, the leggings that I use are cotton and I've added the link for them uh, for you ladies to, to see. They're really inexpensive and um, it's, an, it's a good thing to change because again, you don't want those materials. The, the spandex material, they made out of nylon and lycra and those materials are really toxic for the skin, for the body. So you, you don't want to use those. And if you're gonna use a legging, make sure that you're covering your behind, your, the front, that you're looking uh, modest. Amen. So, and another question came about the uh, high heels, right? Well, actually, before I forget, someone said that, well, how about it's not uh, reasonable to be wearing dresses every day? How about, the, how about when you uh, have to run, right? Maybe you run to the mountains, she, they meant. But so I just thought, what did the people in the Bible times did? Mm -hmm. Good question. What was their attire? They did wear some sort of tunic both men and women, and so they ran. We know <laughs> of, of the stories of the Bible that they had to flee for themselves. Uh, I think of the Waldensians, for example. Yeah. Uh, Waldensians, they live uh, uh, around mountains, mm -hmm. uh, mountainous areas, and they suffer many persecution, and then oftentimes they had to flee to those mountains. Yeah, so there was no pants mm -hmm. back then to change into. So remember that. Uh, it is God's will. God wants his people to look in a certain way. Everything is possible. We receive so many beautiful testimonies from some of you, how God uh, was moving and changing your dress, uh, the way you dressed, and how you, you desire certain things, and God provided them for you in, in very low price. You know, that just shows that God is, is interested in you. He's in every detail of your life whether it's to buy some food or it's to buy some clothes, he's there, uh, invite so, him. Speaking of, uh, we have received some wonderful testimonies uh, since we published the uh, uh, part one of the Dress Reform video. Uh, I'd like to share this one testimony uh, coming from a sister who's in Australia. She says, I wandered away from God and the past two years have returned. I felt compelled to go through my wardrobe and change to natural fibers. I only had uh, acrylic jumpers, but was able to find cotton jumpers. One day I was heading to secondhand shop and uh, to a secondhand shop and said to God, I won't buy anything unless I can find a natural fiber black jumper. I would love to find an uh, Angora uh, jumper God uh, led me to a black woolen jumper with Angora uh, collar, uh, collar uh, and uh, it was a really small price. I knew God helped me. I am Amen. still on my journey and thank you for your presentation. Blessings from Australia. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. We had the, another question that came in about yes. high heels. So this is about uh, high heels and... Um, I guess we can start by reading uh, what uh, Sister White says on um, fashion in general, because we know that um, high heels is, is one of the things that is part of the fashion of the world, worldly fashion. And some of our sisters, unfortunately, still wearing high heels, uh, you know, we see them in, in church. And so we wanted to address um, this as well. And so that way um, we, we see from the, the pen of inspiration, what is God's will and what he's telling his people. So what would you like to read? It says, many of our sisters willingly bear the unnecessary burden of conformity to worldly dress, attempting to follow the fashions. Their burdens are greatly increased, yet they willingly bear the yoke because they worship, they worship the goddess of fashion. This is from Vivian Herald, November 17, 1904. Okay, so, you know, as, as you look at the screen and you look at the pair of heels that we, you know, that's one of uh, very high, exaggerated, 
But um, I can just tell you from when I was in the world, I used to wear high heels for more than eight hours. And today I have back problems because of that. So not only one, it's not modest, right? It doesn't represent the Lord. It screams the name of the enemy all over them. And two, um, they are actually not healthy to be wearing um, such heels. So um, you can develop problems in your foot. You can develop back problems. And again, we are to take care of our health. And when we know to do better, we should do better. Amen. And we've gone over this, the makeup before. Let's read what it says there. This is found in With You and Herald, November 17, 1904. Not a few of our people are backsliding. They are imitating the fashions of the world. Their spirituality is dying. Step by step, they are approaching world loving selfishness and pride and taking possession of them. And the love of God finds little room in their hearts. Some who were once zealous reformers are now indifferent. Sisters who were once plain in dress are now conforming to fashion. God expects his commandments keeping people to be distinct from worldlings. But in many instances, the line of demarcation is hardly discernible. discernible. And uh, we mentioned this on the last video, how we cannot distinguish God's people nowadays because we all look the same. Well, remember the contrast between Revelation 12 and Revelation 17. Mm. There was a huge contrast. You have the, the woman, which represents in Revelation 12, God's church. Um, she, she had, uh, the way she dressed was in simplicity, modesty. Mm -hmm. uh, she was clothed with uh, the sun, the Bible says, which represents the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Um, standing on the moon, which represents the Old Testament. Uh, and a crown of 12 stars. She, uh, and you read the, the text carefully, um, she represents modesty. Mm -hmm. She represents uh, simplicity, purity. Yes. Um, and in contrast to that, you, you have uh, Revelation 17, uh, the apostate church, decked with gold, precious stones, you know, jewelries and all of, uh, all of those things. And, and the Bible says, um, we, though we are in this world, but we are, uh, we are not supposed to be oh. of the world or lack the world. And Jesus says, if anyone loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So let's continue reading this same quote found in Review and Herald, November 17, 1904. As I have seen those of our faith becoming worldly, my heart has been saddened. Some of those who profess to believe that they have the last message of mercy to give to the world follow the fashions as far as they think their profession of faith will allow them to do. And their influence leads others astray. Their lack of Christ-likeness is apparently to all. The Lord is dishonored by their conformity to the fashions of this degenerate age. Then it says, Outward display is contradictory to our profession of faith. I entreat my sisters to guard against the tendency to dress in accordance with the demands of fashion. So that's what it is. We entreat you. you um, another thing that came to my mind when the, both the Bible and Sister White talks about the demands of fashion, it's not just uh, the immodest uh, e um, dresses or jewelries or high heels and, and things like that, but it's the cost as well. Mm. Yeah. Because a lot of those things are expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And they make they have tons of commercials about those things to make them normal that this is what you want because now um, it, it it really drives you or tempts you to glorify self you know when we're supposed to be glorifying God, God yeah. right We're not supposed to be uh, draw att uh, attention to us uh, or excite admiration. Uh, to what we are wearing, um, so that's that's very clear. So, and it says that we display, we dishonor God mm -hmm. when we do this. When we want to uh, look like the world, oh, we don't think it's a big deal, or oh, it's just dress. Again, is the obedience to God 
Um, Amen. He's, he's preparing you for heaven, and uh, he desires to transform you, and so that you can have, um, as you surrender, to have a total transformation to be ready for heaven. Amen. And we have here on the screen, the Lord is dishonored by their conformity to the fashions of this regenerate age. Uh, we do not discourage neatness in dress. Correct taste is not to be despised nor condemned. Our faith, if carried out, will lead us to be so plain in dress and zealous of good works that we shall be marked as peculiar. But when we lose taste for uh, order, order and neatness in dress, we virtually leave the truth for the truth never degrades but elevates. When believers are neglectful of their dress and are coarse and rough in their manners, the influence hurts the truth. We are, said the inspired apostle, made a spectacle unto the world. Spectacle. Spectacle <laughs> unto the world and to angels and to men. All heaven is marking the daily influence that the professed followers of Christ exert upon the world. My sisters, your dress is telling either in favor of Christ and the sacred truth or in favor of the world. Which is it? Remember that we must all answer to God for the influence we exert. Amen. Amen. Praise, praise God. And again, this is about honoring God with our bodies. Amen. Um, when whatever we do, do we all, the Bible says, to the, to the glory of God. So we have to keep in mind that, okay, would God approve of this or that? Uh, that should be my attitude in everything. It's mm -hmm. not just in dress or whatever it is, in everything, in what we eat, in um, the decisions we make, mm -hmm. uh, the places we choose to go to, whatever it is. Uh, will that glorify God? And, and if, we, if we have that attitude, um, if, we, if we have that attitude, that means we are, put, we are putting God first and then God in return, he will speak to us because we want to glorify him, but because we are sinful, uh, because we tend to go by our feelings and emotions and, and so on, uh, by our human tendencies. But when we have that, that attitude, we say, okay, Lord, I want to honor you. Will this or that glorify you if I, if I put it on my body, if I eat it, if I, if, if I go there. And then when the Lord sees that, He is going to uh, speak to you. He is going to impress upon your mind what to do uh, so that you can glorify His name. Yes. Amen. So um, as part of the, uh, the links that I shared, I also added some stores uh, names on there because uh, those stores are not very, um, their website, it's not great for shopping online. So um, it's, one of, it's one of those stores that there, there's one uh, almost in every uh, state or city. So you can just go in and, and, and look, always remember to look at the tags to make sure that um, you're buying um, safe materials, uh, which are cotton, um, as I mentioned, uh, linen, also um, wool, or depending if you're, if you're in the cold weather and you need to buy something warmer. And also uh, Model and Viscose. Um, Viscose is the same as Rayon, so you'll see uh, those names. Is, they are wood pulp. Again, just wash those before you wear them. And, um, and also, um, yeah, so just go in the stores and, and look. You'll be surprised. I was surprised sometimes at the, some of the stores I go that, well, they have a cotton dress and it's pretty inexpensive, uh, less than $20. So um, you find, uh, as you said today, if there's a will, there's a way. So, and with the help of the Lord, pray before you go in. Said, Lord, show me what I need to get. I need to change my wardrobe a little bit to glorify you. God will send his angels with you to help you. So I just wanted to give you some more examples, some uh, modest uh, dresses. Um, so we'll put them on the screen. Um, next slide. So these are so, just some um, styles. As you can see, it's a, um, everything has sleeves um, uh, and long, but yet they're still, um, they're still beauty. Modest. Yeah, modest. Uh, simple, right. 
but yet um, there's still beauty. Well, in a speaking of that, I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not a woman, obviously, but uh, one of the uh, arguments that I hear among Adventist circles, among some Adventist circles, uh, especially those who don't see uh, it's important uh, to uh, to adapt, uh, you know, uh, dress reform in their lives and, and, and to make it a practice, uh, which, by the way, which represents righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's a type of righteousness covering, you know, covering the body. Because remember, in the beginning, Adam and Eve were clothed with a robe, mm -hmm. uh, the robe of righteousness. And think about this. When Jesus comes again, what will he do? When, when we, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, beginning in verse 51, I believe, uh, where Paul was describe, describing this mortal shall put on immortality. And when that mortal puts on immortality, you know what that, uh, what's going to be on the body? A robe. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be a robe. And we need to get use of that you know dressing modestly meaning covering the body you know uh, we, we will do also a uh, a study a lecture together on on uh, dress reform for men as well mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, i believe you have another one uh for for for, for the ladies uh, I'll, I'll let you handle that part because this deals with something else so but everything for us as christians is preparation for heaven Whatever God asks us to do now, it's because He's preparing us for what heaven is going to be like. We're going to be wearing robes. Amen. Um, it, it, well, we cannot really describe the robe, really, because eyes have not seen, no ears heard what God has prepared for those who love His appearing, as the Apostle Paul says. Uh, but even our diet, for example. And I will be doing, by God's grace, a study on, on diet, you know, using you know, the, the sanctuary, the, the uh, outer court, the holy place, and, and the most holy place to see where we should be now as Seventh day Adventists. So all of those things are preparation for what we're going to find in heaven. So, but if we don't like those things, if we say, no, that's not for me, I reject that, then we're not going to like heaven. Yeah. We're not going to like heaven because that's how heaven is going to be like. Yeah. We don't imagine us wearing short robes in heaven, right? No, I cannot picture that I one. I cannot picture that one either. Yeah. So if you, you know, God, that's why this is a preparation for heaven. God wants to get used to wearing, covering your body, because that's what it will be in heaven. We're all going to be wearing white robes, mm -hmm. and um, I assume they're going to be long, uh, modest, right, yeah. pure, and but yet still beautiful as i mentioned earlier sorry you're gonna say something. no go ahead as i mentioned earlier that christ uh he warns against the pride of life but not against its natural beauty and grace right so and as we read in spirit of prophecy it's important that we do uh, have neatness in our dress right and, and and as we start to this if we disregard that we're gonna disregard truth and, and again i was going to say that going back to the garden after Adam, uh, or I should say, uh, well, both of them, Adam and Eve, um, sin against God. And then all of a sudden they realized they were naked, it says. Mm. They, realized, they realized they were naked. And, uh, and then what did they do? They tried to cover themselves. They tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. You see, that was a fashion of the world then. Mm. The fashion of the world was introduced then in Genesis chapter 3. They heard the voice of God coming and then they tried to hide themselves to cover their nakedness with fig leaves. You know, they, they basically, that was the invention of miniskirt. Mm. Yeah. That was the invention of miniskirt. And that was the invention of Imada's clothing. And then what did God do? God removed the clothes that they had made for themselves. And then he put animal skin on them. It covered their nakedness completely. And, and what does that mean? It means the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The, because an uh, animal was sacrificed right then and there, and the animal skin was used to clothe them. And likewise, when Jesus comes, 
those who will be redeemed from the earth, he will put on that righteous robe on them, Amen. and which will signify uh, that they are his. They are the chosen people of God. Here is another example of uh, modesty again. Yes, I just wanted to share a few other things. And you, you will see some of these styles on the website that I shared. Um, again, simple, but yet, um, you know, modest, uh, but yet beautiful. And, right. And um, so I just wanted to give our, our sisters some more examples of some of the styles to look for. And again, just go on the description and make sure that um, it, sh it will tell you the fabric composition. Mm -hmm. So then make sure you're using either cotton, linen, uh, viscose, rayon, model. Uh, those are safe fabrics. You want to stay away from spandex, lycra, nylon, um, and polyester. And, and since this video is live right now, it's being broadcasted uh, live, so we, you're not going to see the comment section under the video. You'll, you'll find right now the live uh, chat, as many of you are uh, interacting right now in the live chat. But after the video is over, we will also add those links in the uh, comment section uh, for all of you to find there, especially those who will be watching this, this video after uh, this broadcast is over. Was there any other questions that came in that we could answer? Uh, let me see if Did there you? was any other question that came in. Uh, no, I don't see uh, lipstick. Somebody men mentioned something about lipstick. Mm -hmm. um, what do you have to say about that? Well, we covered that. It's um, part of makeup. Um, Again, it is not God's will for get his people to be wearing those things. I used to wear them when I was in the world and I came from the world. I gave my life to Christ and, and he changed that. So if you're still wearing makeup, ask God to help you. Um, we are all uh, being transformed and molded. There's a time or different, uh, I guess I would say, uh, levels of growth but um, nothing's impossible with God. As long as you surrender, um, I remember I have a mom that said that she loved to use uh, jewelry. She loved, loved jewelry. And, um, but God began to take that um, from her. She began to not want to wear jewelry anymore until um, she came to a point that she no longer wanted to wear it. And so God changed that in her life. But she started as, as loving it, you know, and liking to wear those things, to put those things in her body. So nothing is impossible with God. Um, again, we are here to educate, not to condemn or judge anyone. We are here to help you. We are brothers and sisters. We want to go to heaven together. We want to see you all there. And, but we need to help each other. We need to look out for another and as the greatest commandment of all is to love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Amen. And as uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do it all to the glory of God. Whatsoever ye do, do it all to the glory of God. That means self must be removed out of the picture in that equation, self is not there. Uh, everything should be done in accordance to a thus saith the Lord. We would like to thank you for joining us uh, for part two of this series on dress reform and the fashion of the world. And by God's grace, we will continue with this subject because uh, we believe that it is very important for our brothers and sisters out there to uh, uh, be informed uh, about those things which uh, are connected with the third angel's message and especially in light of the fact that many of our churches many of our conferences um, unions um, conference they they do not promote those things anymore um, and if you if you were to go to the general conference headquarters for example you see women with high heels wearing pants and everything and sometimes the men 
uh, as well I are not dressed uh, properly that would reflect the glory of God. Uh, once again, uh, we thank you for joining us. Before we go, we uh, would like to um, leave you with a word of prayer. Loving Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity you've given us to uh, spend this time uh, with our brothers and sisters all over the world. We pray, Lord, that this message was a blessing to many, and not to just to them, Lord, but they can carry it on to their friends and their families, and that, Father, um, we uh, take these um, truth, these messages, as your word um, to teach us, to correct us, to mold us, Lord, to prepare us for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, help us not to harden our hearts as we hear your voice, Lord. Um, we pray that you forgive us of our sins and that you continue to help us, Lord, as we know um, the transformation is a lifelong work and you want to finish the work you have started in each one of us. So help us to surrender daily, Lord, so that you can um, mold us and, and, and restore your image in us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, for your wonderful love, for your patience and mercy. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.